if you've been following me on Twitter or you watched my last video, then you know that I'm aping in headfirst into on-chain NFT games. They're not only cool art and fun to collect, but there's an element of excitement in the high risk, high reward. However, if you don't learn how to play these games, you're not going to win. So I'm going to help you win with one of my upcoming favorite picks. Not only am I going to do a too long, didn't read review of this white paper so that you can understand as much of the game as, as short as possible, but I'm also going to throw in a few tips and strategies that I'll be using while I'm playing this game. Also, for whoever watches this video all the way through, the team was nice enough to give me 10 whitelist spots to give away. So. I'm going to be giving away five whitelists to whoever watches this video all the way through where I tell them how to get it at the end. <laughs> uh, but I'm also going to give away five on my Twitter. So you can check out my Twitter here, Nate's NFT Talk. To watch this video to the end, you're going to understand exactly what this game is, how it works, and how to hopefully win, as well as potentially get yourself a whitelist spot for their Celestial Keys, which is going to be big to get into. I'm Nate, and this is my NFT talk. Okay, so quick version. I'm gonna talk fast, and I'm just gonna go through this white paper, and we're gonna try to keep it under 10 minutes. All right, so freaks and guilds. If you are familiar with like Wolf Game or Mecha Apes or any of these play to earn games, you know that they have insane potential for growth. They're extremely competitive, they're fun to collect, and they have a very high risk, high reward uh, feel to it. These guys are taking that type of gameplay, throwing it through a full fantasy RPG with different races, classes, uh, essentially like leveling bosses and whatnot, and going all the way through. They even have NFT worlds that they're working on where you can actually play a Minecraft based game in their world. So this project is going to be huge. They're already doing some amazing things. The artwork is pretty cool and I'm super excited to get into this. Okay, so to summarize the introduction, you are a celestial being that arrives in the world of Urahan or however you say it you will be a essentially a general you collect freaks right so the three main pieces are going to be celestials freaks and freak bucks that is the main three pieces of this game as a celestial you will be gathering freaks you build them out into guilds and you send the guilds off to go hunt or you send them off to go battle which is the player versus everything pve or the pvp modes the entire point of this game is one to collect as many as you possibly can sort of like pokemon but two you earn freak bucks no matter what you're doing you want to try to get as much freaks freak bucks as possible because the generational mints will be minted with freak bucks so if you want more nfts if you want to be playing the game more if you want to be winning more battles and going up on the leaderboards and whatnot you're gonna want to be getting freak bucks as they say, build your guilds, build your glory. So to summarize the overview, essentially the guilds that you're going to be having is a group of freaks. Okay, so your freaks consist of one of three races. There's the ogres, the trolls and the fairies all have different stats. Okay, so depending on the build or the makeup team composition of your freak guild, you can uh, sway different uh, benefits to your battle. Not only that, but also because of their races, there's what's called a 72 hour epoch where each of the hunting zones will change and they will benefit from different races that you stake in there. So your races do apply to PVP battles as well as PVE hunting. Also, I do need to make this disclaimer since it's right here. This is not financial advice. This isn't an investment. One freak buck equals one freak buck. If you know what a LP is, a liquidity pool, that is potentially gonna happen. Wink, wink, right? It could happen and if you know what that means you know that there's more to win so i'm going to talk about the two play modes there's hunting and battling i'm going to talk about those but first let's cover freaks so when you mint freaks whether you're minting the gen zeros which gen zeros are going to have amazing benefits okay we'll talk about that later um, they are minted with only ethereum generations one and two will be minted with only freak bucks so in order to mint after the initial public mint with Ethereum, you'll have to have freak bucks and be playing the game in order to mint more NFTs, which is really cool. When you mint a freak, you get a one in three chance. You will get either a ogre, a troll, or a fairy. It is completely random. Freaks have three different attributes. Each race has different ones, and it's the power, which is maximum uh, damage potential. Health is their health points, obviously, and critical strike is a multiplier that is applied to their damage during battle. So this right here is the critical strike bell curve you for each race you can see that the fairy has the highest critical race Troll has the middle critical strike rate and the ogre has the lowest critical strike rate but in the opposite the ogre has the most health like the fairy may have the highest critical strike but they have the lowest health and the troll is fairly balanced in the middle with the most power 
So this is really cool because the team composition, when you're going into battle and you're playing with three, five, and seven freaks in those battlegrounds and one celestial each, the composition of your team does matter, okay? We're gonna talk about that. A little footnote, Gen Zero freaks, they're protected from being burned or killed in battle where they, they, they're permanently gone, okay? So since we're spending Ethereum on them, they're safe from that and they have a 50% chance less likely to be stolen in battle, which we're gonna talk about. So one of the main key pieces in this game is going to be your Celestials. Most players will not have a whole lot of Celestials, okay? In fact, Celestials are gonna be some of the most unique and rarest pieces but they are the generals to your guilds, okay? You cannot battle without them and you can stake them in what's called the Hunter Observatory and they will earn Freak Bucks as a 20% tax off of all Freaks that are currently staked hunting, which is huge. So obviously Gen Zero Celestials that are gonna be minted with Ethereum, they will have the highest health and the highest power. Gen 1 will have the next lower tier at two to seven health and two to seven power. And Gen 2 will be the latest minted and they'll also be some of the weaker ones. However, they will still be able to be powered up. Each Celestial, when they're minted, besides the Gen Zeros, will only be allowed to uh, command a guild of three freaks. Okay, now the Gen Zeros, they do have a chance of coming out from mint being able to command a guild of five freaks if you're going to be doing the high risk high reward like i am you're going to want celestials and you're going to want good celestials and i'll explain this celestials give a modifier a benefit modifier to your guild but not only that if you win your pilfer power is a chance at stealing the defeated freak Okay, so if there's a guild that you beat, you have a chance of stealing their freaks. This is the breakdown. One pill for power equals a one in 15 odds. Two pill for power is a one in 12 odds. Three pill for power is a one in 10 odds. And four pill for power is a one in eight odds. Now remember, if you're battling with Gen Zero freaks, you get a 50% reduction on that. And of course, you upgrade your Celestials using the Freak Bucks. Okay, so now that we talked about the Freaks and the Celestials, let's talk about hunting. So hunting is the safest, most conservative way to get Freak Bucks if you wanna go the conservative route. If you don't wanna do the risky game, if you don't wanna risk your Freaks, but you are accepting of the lower and slower, safer amounts, this is what you wanna do, okay? Each location is gonna require a different amount of Freaks and a different time period to stake. Obviously, the less freaks and the less amount of time committed to hunting, the lower the freak buck yield. On this page right here, you can see Elville Enclave, Sacred Summit, and Mount Lafka Ano, which are the three different tiers of the locations within hunting. Essentially, tier one is one freak for 24 hours and you get 200 freak bucks. The tier two is three freaks for 48 hours and you get uh, 18 freak bucks. But tier three, you commit five freaks for uh, three days, 72 hours, and you get 6,000 freak bucks, which is exponentially more than if you would have uh, staked them individually for 24 hour periods, okay? So what this is, is this is an enticement to, hey, yes, you're gonna stake your freaks longer and they're gonna go out on longer missions, but they are gonna come back with so much more versus maybe like a paper hand person who would just sit there and just roll them every 24 hours and hope they find a good time to dump them on the floor. This is a really good mechanic because this is actually going to encourage a solid economy within the game. Now, when you claim, okay, say your time is done, there's a 20% tax. So if you staked five freaks for 72 hours and there's 6,000 freak bucks to be claimed, you only get 80% of that and the other 20% goes to Celestials who are staked in the hunting observatory. So it is worth it if you wanna go the conservative route to put your Celestial in the hunting observatory because they'll just make money off of all the other freaks that are working for it. There's also no time commitment for your Celestial. So you can pull him in and out to go battle or hunt anytime you want. Now let's talk about battling. So Celestials, they are required to battle because they are your guild generals. Your guild is a compilation of freaks and your Celestials and depending on the races, the traits and the skills and the modifiers, you can win or lose battles. Just like the hunting grounds in a battle, there are three different tiers, each with a higher commitment requirement and each with a higher reward possibility. The lowest tier is Kiltaro Forest and you need three freaks, one celestial, and if you win four battles, you get 3,600 freak bucks in the day. Okay, so let's explain that. You get four battles in a 24 hour period because each celestial, they have a six hour cooldown. So say I have celestial one, and I'm like, hey, you're gonna go battle with these guys. So they go off and they battle for that period, okay? He has to cool down. He cannot command another guild 
for six hours. But then after six hours, you can go battle again. Six hours, you can do it again. So in a 24-hour period, if you wake up in the middle of the night, you could get four battles in. The most you could win doing the three freaks and one celestial in Kiltaro Forest is 3,600 freak bucks. I'm going to skip over uh, Ridge Rock because you get it. The biggest risk and reward is you take seven freaks and one celestial. You go on down to the Accursed Forest. So this is a massive battle. Each battle is going to average... I believe 2,800 freak bucks per win. So winning all four battles within this 24 hour period, you would get 11,200 freak bucks, or as I said, 2,800 per win. That is massive. Yes, you could potentially have one of your uh, freaks killed off unless it's a gen zero or stolen by a winning celestial. But at the end of the day, if you're grinding through these and you've got a good team and a good composition, you are stacking freak bucks. You're potentially winning more freaks from other players, okay? And you will be able to mint like a boss. I personally will be doing my best to get my seven or eight or even nine freaks because you're gonna wanna have some backups. I'm gonna be busting out the accursed forest all day long. Okay, so there's a little footnote in here. If a player loses a battle, there's a 5% chance that the freak gets burned. This is really good because in a lot of these games, the, the mints just become oversaturated, overpopulated. Um, and they just like become overinflated and the value of the project drops, okay? The 5% burn on this one, I mean, you're sending them off to battle, you know? people die okay it's battle right but two it, it's deflationary so the actual project is actually going to benefit in the long run because even though the freaks may fully max out in mint they will continue to go up in value because they will be getting burned they will be dying off in battles again this is if you want to play the high risk high reward i will be doing it because i'm excited for it i love that kind of stuff but if you if you are like hey i do not want to lose one of my freaks either a only battle with gen zero freaks or just stick to the hunting grounds and if you want to do the math here's the math on how the battle is determined basically the freak power plus celestial power modifier times that by the, the team critical strike rating and then you add that all up that is your battle score essentially and then you're going to put that over the enemy team's battle score highest number wins it will pay to pay attention to the composition of your battle teams okay if if you can Pay attention to who you're putting in there. So this is where it's going to get big. The Celestial Key Holders, they mint on February 4th, 2022, which is literally in a few days. Okay, Celestial Key Holders will get a major benefit for uh, buying and staking right away. Okay, so mint it and stake it. You're going to get a discount for mint. You're also going to get a big bag of FBX before the game even starts. So you can start minting using FBX as soon as that opens. And you'll also get discounted rate and a free freak mint. If you can, if you can get your hands on a celestial key before the game starts, my big suggestion is get a key, stake it and hold it. Okay, people are going to dump them after they mint, buy a couple of them if you want to take this game seriously and you're going to have a massive head start. Also, of course, you can see, obviously, the generations will be capped and limited. These celestials will be the, some of the lowest supply and the freaks will eventually cap out. And because of the burn mechanic, you know, it's going to deflate the floor and it's going to keep a healthy economy in the project long term. And really quick for minting, only the Gen 0 will be mintable with Ethereum. And then from Gen 1 to Gen 2 is only mintable using Freak Bucks. So you have to play the game or buy Freak Bucks if you're going to mint future generations. Really quick, this game, once minting is done, the game is not even close to done. In fact, once minting is complete, the game just started, okay? These guys are working on a massive project. In fact, they already own a couple NFT worlds that they're building a Minecraft-based uh, Freaks and Guilds game that you will be able to play. You can actually run around the world. They'll set up quests and missions, and it'll be like PVP and like a battle royale type thing, and it's gonna be really cool. This is literally just the start of a massive on-chain game economy and like a total brand. And I'm super excited for it. And I really think you should be getting into it. Remember, it pays to be early. This is your announcement that you're early. And of course, I promised you guys some whitelists. So if you watch to this point, I want you to do a couple things. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Obviously, I do appreciate that and it helps my channel grow. But what I want you to do is in the comments below on this video, I want you to tell me what you're most excited for in this project, in this game, okay? And I want you to tell me what you're gonna be doing for your playstyle. Are you gonna take the safe route and go hunting or are you gonna be a total degen like me and battle it up? 
Let me know in the comments below. I'll be picking five people from this video. If you want to increase your chances of winning one of these whitelists, I'll have a pinned post on my Twitter. You can go check that out over here, uh, Nate's NFT Talk, and you can like and share that post as well. Be sure to retweet it and tag some friends, and that increases your chances where I'll be giving another five uh, whitelist spots away on my Twitter. I hope you guys are as amped up for this game as I am. I'm freaking excited. Shout out to the team for allowing me to get in, get some information and share this with my audience, as well as hook you up with some whitelists. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.